Donald Trump said what? Uh, somehow I thought the collapse of civilization was going to be more fun. Why on earth would I think that? Oh yeah, Fallout. Did I ever beat Fallout 2? Man, I'd really like to revisit that. Maybe play some Unreal Tournament, some Baldur's Gate. You know what? I think a 1999 retro build would be just the thing get me through the rest of this. Uh, how much of my stimulus check do I still have left? Let's take a quick look here. Uh, right, um, three, three dollars. We'll, we'll make it work. We'll make it work. Okay, Alan, I've got three dollars left of my stimulus check, and I want to build a machine that'll allow me to enjoy games from the golden era of PC gaming from about 1996 to 2001. We're talking Unreal Tournament, Deus Ex, Baldur's Gate, Counter-Strike, StarCraft, Diablo 2, all that good stuff. Um, so I've, I've done it. I've purchased the components, I've put them together, it works. I want to take you through the the specs of the three dollar baller, so that oh, you yeah. can appreciate the work that I've done here. Um, yes. So first of all, as we all know, the foundation of any good build is a strong CPU mobo pairing, and what could be stronger than, as described on eBay, the Recycle ninety eight motherboard PC computer parts wiring zip CD drive three point five harness salvage. <laughs> Which I got for it tells 99 you cents. everything. And and what was the condition of these parts that you got? So it was shipped to me with no packing material, and so the CD-ROM drive that was included had basically demolished all the other components. Uh, when I opened it, a small pile of surface mount, uh, you know, components fell onto the ground. Um, the zip drive was completely obliterated. There's like nothing left of it. The motherboard had a couple of you know surface mount chips that got kind of pushed askew and legs bent that I was able to resolder and the CPU was Life is protected tough for the $3 baller. <laughs> Listen, when you're on a budget, you got to make some sacrifices, but yeah, yeah. What I got was an Asus board, that's a big name, Ooh. with an Intel Celeron 466, um, yeah. which we've talked about, right? It's a known quantity. Yeah. And I love the, I just love the layout of this motherboard because it's, it's got clear airflow, you know, to the processor. They didn't shove yes. it in some weird corner. Uh, yeah, it's right yes. next to the case fan. Yes, like, it's a very, a very refreshing layout um, and also very wide. Uh, it's micro ATX. <laughs> and yet because of the onboard ATI Rage Pro Turbo graphics, it's, it sticks out quite a bit more than your average micro ATX board. Um, I mean, we could have stopped right here. You know, we've got we've got CPU, motherboard, a little bit of RAM and onboard graphics. You know, this could have been like one dollar baller. But um, I was worried that the ATI Ridge Pro Turbo might not quite get us where we needed. Um, but what's what's great about this board is flexibility. Um, yeah. Unlike a lot of OEM boards, we have expansion. We've got two X AGP slot, we've got two PCI slots, and we've got an ISA slot. That's a lot. Um, yeah. This is it's very, uh, very kind of HP to think of upgradability in this. It was very kind of HP to think of this. Yes, I actually, at the time I bought it, didn't realize that this was the HP OEM variant of ASUS's uh, MEB VM board. The MEB VM is a Celeron Mendocino overclocking board. However, all overclocking functionality, including the clock chip and the pins that you need to set, you know, the jumpers for front side bus and all that, have been removed. Uh, and what I learned from the forums is that attempting to flash the stock ASUS BIOS on top of this board will brick it. Um, so it would be a four dollar dollar machine. So, yeah, <laughs> that'd be bad. yeah. So it's got some high points. All the capacitors were in good shape. They're legit Japanese Rubicon caps. Um, and generally speaking, once I resoldered all the important stuff, it's still missing a few things. Uh, but once I resoldered the important stuff, it's working. All right. um, so what did you stick in that brown AGP slot right there? Well, I'm glad you asked, Alan, because it is another famous maker from this era. It is NVIDIA's GeForce 4 MX 440. Um, wow. A powerful card later than the 1999 period we're talking about. But if you've been on Phil's uh, computer lab, you know that the GeForce 2 MX 400 frequently is used as a replacement for the GeForce 256. Uh, which is period correct because it, per it performs similarly. So 
even better, we get the GeForce 4 MX440, which is basically the same thing. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and this was yet another 99 cent eBay purchase. But I think. What's you, the catch, Ost? What's the catch? There's no catch. There's just some kind of empty space near the top of this card um, that so you might have noticed. Um, yeah, there's some DDR SD RAM missing. Yeah, so. This card. So the MX440 can support 128-bit memory bus, but was commonly found, especially in OEM budget solutions, with a 64-bit memory bus or, or, God forbid, a 32-bit memory bus. We've avoided the worst-case scenario, but we're, we're down on our, our memory throughput by, by half. However, we do have v, uh, VGA, DVI, and TV out, um, which is very convenient for capturing. Um, and we have AGP-8X. Which is that's great. Great because we have a two X slot. Um, it's actually it actually turned out to be very bad um, because this later version of the GeForce Four uh, MX requires a uh, much later NVIDIA driver version, and as we know, the performance of NVIDIA's drivers went over time, and so we're losing some performance. I tried to I tried to force earlier drivers, but there's they did something with the 8x variant where if I force the earlier driver, I get texture rendering issues. So we're gonna have to deal with it. It's really gonna hurt us because we're only on a Celeron 466. But again, three dollar baller. I mean, when um, you're a triple OEM offender, this is kind of what you expect. This so is, this is what you expect, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. it works. You know, it, it as you pointed out, MX cards never die. Like all the other oh, ones no. do. Anything that says Ultra is going to be dead. But if it's MX, totally going to work forever. Okay, so that's two thirds of our budget down, right? Uh, mm -hmm. As George Lucas said, sound is half the experience. Um, so we've we've you know kept our remaining ninety nine cents for the sound card. Um, and this I found at the bottom of a pile at my local recyclers. It is the poetically named Aztec I. 38-MNSN855. It's from a, an ancient Central American civilization. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Very few people know this, but um, in addition to creating megalithic architecture, the Aztecs also created Sound Blaster uh, Pro compatible sound cards. Oh. This was recently uncovered at a dig site. Um, no, this was uncovered from a Packard Bell machine from 1997. Um, this is the OEM variant of the Sound Galaxy Pro 16 III 3D PMP. Um, it, uh, it's based on the Aztec uh, AZT2320. It's a 16 bit sound card. It has a licensed Yamaha OPL3 uh, implementation Ooh. for you, OPL3 FM purists. Um, we have fantastic Sound Blaster Pro 2.0 emulation. Uh, we have a MIDI interface without any hanging note bugs, which is notable. Uh, another advantage over the Sound Blaster 16. Drivers come right on the Windows 98 SE disk. And those of you who are saying, ah, ISA, plug and play, it needs some obscure TSR or something to run in DOS. No, 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 my friend. This is supported by Unisound. We can use the... Uh, Unisound driver that covers so many ISA plug-and-play cards to initialize this and DOS. No trouble, no hunting for weird drivers. Um, and it comes with a modem. <laughs> Everything you need. Everything you need. So we're going to be doing multiplayer as well um, as soon as I can get a POTS uh, line installed. Um, I'll be ringing you up for some NetMech. Um, so it's good, yeah. right? It's good. And then you know, this gives us that late DOS game compatibility we want to play titles at the sort of early range of our of our uh, spectrum here. So, okay. Now, that's the three dollar. So, yeah. Now that you've spent three dollars, right. please send Austin a hundred dollars on Venmo. He'll ship you the rest of the parts, which are <laughs> listed here. Now, all you have to do is get out. Here's my PayPal. Um, Five easy payments of twenty dollars. Right, and then you'll you'll have, and I'll ship the rest of the parts to you. No, uh, I was able to basically do the rest of the computer for free. So we've got the side of the road edition uh, micro ATX case, 
Uh, it had a full Core 2 Duo system in it that I that's much faster than what I built, but I ripped out because, you know, not period correct. Also, many of the components had failed. Um, Alan kindly provided a 380-watt Antec power supply. Got 128 megs of PC-133 out of some old Mac G4, um, which is running at CAS2. I've got a 20 gigabyte Seagate ID hard drive, which is quite period correct and extremely loud. Um, it is probably dying, but it has not died yet. And I've got whatever DVD drive was stuck in the thing when I found it on the side of the road. So that's everything you need for a computer. Um, but what kind of computer is it? How does it compare? to a purpose-built, period-correct machine from early 1999. How? Well, I'm glad you asked, because the machine that I typically play these games on uh, is this Pentium 3 450 Katmai system with a real Intel SE 440BX2 motherboard, uh, 128 megs PC100, uh, all singing, all dancing, 3DFX Voodoo 3 3000 AGP graphics card, and integrated Yamaha DSXG PCI sound with an actual name brand, uh, recent name brand power supply, uh, new old stock ugly case as is the fashion, um, a GoTech floppy emulator, same Sony OptiArc type uh, optical drive, and even 120 gigs of delicious Maxter storage. Um, You've, you've recreated the Dell Dimension XPS T450 from 1999. Yes. Congratulations. At a, at a somewhat lower cost. And with this lovely glowing blue Antec VGA slot cooler. Wow. How much did this cost in total, Lost? This whole build that I put together, my, my typical um, sort of 99 period correct build, cost about $200. If you go on eBay now and you try to buy yourself a Voodoo 3 3000 AGP, you're, you're looking at 100 120 bucks easy. So... It's easy to shell out the big bucks if you want to have something that connects sort of the your afternoon of play today with an afternoon 20, 20 years ago. If you want to hear the whir of your hard drive and the and the post beep and all those things that really make the experience whole, expect to pay a whole lot unless you go through dollar baller route. But the question is, how is three ba dollar baller going to hold up against a real period correct machine? Against Against your period correct machine with the Poodoo 3. With the Poodoo. <laughs> <laughs> you Vladimir. said it, not I. All right. <laughs> oh, no. So many people are going to unsub. Um, moving on. So let's start with the synthetic benchmarks first. And what could be more appropriate than the perennial favorite 3D Mark 99 Max? Uh, and this looks pretty dire for the $3 baller. Um, we are pretty far behind in CPU marks. Um, not that that means much, but uh, it said something about general system performance that I think should give us pause. Um, things look a little bit better when we're looking at raw 3D marks. Um, we're nearing 4,000 on the Voodoo 3 3,000, uh, and we're just crossing 3,000 on the $3 baller with that MX440. I mean, you didn't graph it, but from marks per dollar i think you're you're still doing quite well marks per dollar we're doing great <laughs> um but you know in that intro benchmark where you're seeing the you know the like the it's like it looks like wipeout, wipeout. it's basically yeah. yeah it's like a reproduction of wipeout um you know you're seeing you're seeing only like 30 frames uh per second on the three dollar baller you're, you're more in the 40s with the voodoo 3 3000 so for games that are using DirectX 6 and earlier, you're going to see better performance with that Voodoo build. Um, but, you know, that's that's kind of, that's not the whole story here. Um, let's see how it does in 3D Mark 2000 just a year later. And ho, ho, so how the return the of the baller. Turned. The baller is back on top. So now 3D Mark 2000 is a DirectX 7 benchmark. And DirectX 7 notably introduced support for hardware, transform, and lighting, which is supported by one of our video cards, namely the, the Baller card. The Baller GeForce 4 MX440. And so this benchmark takes advantage of hardware, transform, and lighting, and actually allows us to outperform that more expensive machine. So, you know, we're, we're crossing 2,500 3D marks in 3D Mark 2000. Um, 
And for those later games, those later um, Windows titles that we want to play, it's actually going to provide a better experience in many cases. Um, so an interesting... Uh, but this finding. is all synthetic. This is all just, you know, smoke and mirrors this here. This is all smoke and mirrors. Listen, this is, it's good enough for Tom's hardware. It's good enough for us, right? Like, you would have bought something based on what Tom said back in the day. But let's, let's be real. Let's, let's bring in rigor and, and really see how this affects real-world gaming. So looking at uh, UT99 Goaty, as it was called. That, that's Game of the Year edition for... For people, yeah, it are, doesn't refer to uh, actual goats. Um, but in, in Unreal <laughs> Tournament '99, running the intro time demo, 10.4 by 768, 16-bit colors, high details, high geometry, all that. Um, we see that we are a fair bit behind on the three-dollar baller in both uh, in Direct 3D and against Glide uh, on that uh, Pentium 3450 with Voodoo 3, and this is kind of surprising. Um, because I would expect on any 3D FX card that Glide is always your best option. It uses optimized, you know, uh, texture formats and so on and so forth. It should be faster in all cases. But I had a, I had a sense watching the, the benchmark that the Glide version actually had more sort of fog and other effects. It may actually be a higher detail version than is available on Direct3D. And there may be other reasons for this. And if you know, go go write in the comments why Glide is slower on a Voodoo 3, uh, at least on this computer, and Unreal Tournament 99. But the story here is that this is maybe not the best setup for competitive UT99. You're probably going to want to run at a lower resolution um, in order to, to get a more competitive frame rate if you're on the $3 baller. Um, but still above 30. All right. It's still above 30. The truth is that back in the day, this would have been considered perfectly acceptable. We don't, we don't have the anything less than 60 is unacceptable mindset that people have these days. It's well, like, at 4K as well, this is only... Uh, 1024 by 768. It's 768p or whatever you would call it. 768p. I, I think we call it 1024 by 768. Anyway... It looks good. It was a little bit on the slow side. So let's look at a later game. So another common benchmark from this era, Quake 3 Arena, running time demo 4, 1024 by 768 again. And again, it's 16-bit color, so we can have a fair comparison with the Voodoo 3. Here we see the baller pulling ahead. The baller ahead. pulls out a win, man. Pulls out a win. And we're into the 40s here. This is a pretty playable, even, I would dare say, competitive or competition-worthy frame rate. Um, and what's even better than this is that on the, on the $3 baller, you can switch into 32 bit color and the blending looks much better. Uh, and you don't lose many frames and you cannot say that about Voodoo 3 that will forever be stuck at, uh, at 16 bit color. Um, but is also putting up, you know, a, a playable frame rate, but it's looking good in this game. So given that this is kind of the most... Uh, you know, intensive game that we're likely to see during this period. Um, I think we can do it. I think we can play everything from 96 right up till 2001. Um, so before we go and cut to the obligatory gameplay montage set to lo-fi EDM, which the algorithm says you're waiting for, um, I would like to say that if you enjoyed this so far, please do like, subscribe, Check us out on Instagram and Twitter at Smug in Play, uh, and let us know what you think and comments down there if you have anything else. And now, please enjoy some gameplay set to Lo-Fi EDM. We'll see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Thank you.